According to storage guru, Fred Moore, 60 to 80% of all stored data is archival data, leading to the need for what he calls the infinite archive. And in this world, digital customers require inexpensive access to archive data that's protected. It's got to be available, durable. It's got to be able to scale and also has to support the governance and compliance edicts of the organizations. Welcome to this next session of the AWS Storage Day with theCUBE. I'm your host, Dave Vellante. We're going to dig into the topic of archiving and digitally preserving data. And we're joined by Joe Fitzgerald, who's the general manager of Amazon S3 Glacier. Joe, welcome to the program. Hey, Dave, it's great to be here. Thanks for having me. Okay, I remember early last de decade, AWS announced Glacier, got a lot of buzz. And, and since then you've evolved your archival storage services strategy and offerings. First question, why should customers archive their data in AWS? Uh, that's a great question. I think Amazon S3 Glacier is a great place for customers to archive data. And I think the preface that you gave, I think uh, covers a lot of the reasons why customers are looking to archive data on the cloud. Uh, uh, we're finding a lot of customers have uh, a lot of data. And uh, if you think about it, most of the world's data is cold by nature. Uh, it's not data that you're accessing all the time. So if you don't have uh, an archival story as part of your data strategy, I think you're missing out on a cost savings opportunity. So one of the reasons we're finding customers uh, looking to move data S3 Glacier is because of cost. Uh, with uh, Glacier Deep Archive, we have uh, an industry leading price point of a dollar per terabyte per month. Uh, I think another reason that we're finding uh, customers wanting to move data to the cloud into Glacier is because of the security, durability, and availability that we offer. Uh, instead of having to worry about uh, some of the most valuable data that your company has and worrying about that being uh, in a tape library that doesn't get accessed very often on premises or you know, offsite in a, in a data locker that you don't really uh, have access to, uh, and we offer the, the best story in terms of the durability and security and availability of that data. And I think the other reason that we're finding customers wanting to move data to S3 Glacier is uh, just the flexibility and agility that having your data in the cloud offers. Uh, um, a lot of the data, you can put it in deep archive and have it uh, sit there and, and not access it. But then if you have uh, you know, some sort of event that you want to uh, access that data, you can get that back very quickly, as well as put to power uh, the rest of the AWS offerings, whether that's our compute offerings or machine learning and analytics offerings. So you just have like unmatched, uh, you know, flexibility, cost and uh, durability of your data. So we're finding a lot of customers looking to um, optimize their business by moving their archive data to the cloud. So let's stick on the business case for a minute. I mean, you kind of nailed the, the cost side of the equation. Clearly you mentioned several of the benefits, but, but for those customers that may not you know, be leaning in uh, to, to, to archive data, how do they think about the cost benefit analysis? When you talk to customers, what are you hearing from them? The ones that have used your services to archive data, what, what are the benefits that they're getting? Uh, it's a great question. Um, I think we find customers fall into a few different, uh, you know, camps and use cases. And one thing that we recommend uh, as a starting point is if you have a lot of data and you're not really familiar with your access patterns, like which, what, what part of the data is warm, what part is cold, uh, we offer a storage class called S3 Intelligent Tiering. And what that storage class does is it optimizes the placement of that data uh, and the cost of that data based on the access pattern. So if, uh, if it's data that is uh, accessed very regularly, uh, it'll sit in one of the warmer storage tiers. Uh, if, it's, if it's accessed infrequently, it'll move down into the infrequent access tier or into the archive or deep archive access tiers. So it's a great way for customers who are struggling to think about archive because it's not something that every customer thinks about every day to uh, get autom automatic cost savings. And then uh, for customers who have, you know, either larger amounts of data or, or better understand the access patterns, um, like, you know, some of the industries that we're seeing like in, you know, autonomous vehicles, you know, they, they might have, you know, they might generate like tons of training data uh, from, uh, from, you know, from running the autonomous vehicles and they kind of know, okay, this data, it, it's, it's, we're not actively using it, but it's also very valuable. They don't want to throw it away. They'll, they'll choose to move that data into an archive tier. So a lot of it kind of comes down to um, 
the degree to which you're able to easily understand the access pattern of the data to figure out which storage class uh, and which archive storage class maps best to your use case. I get it. So if you add that deep archive tier, you automatic, automatically get the benefit uh, thanks to the intelligent tiering. Uh, what about industry patterns? I mean, obviously highly regulated industries have com compliance issues, you know, data intensive industries are going to you know, potentially have this because they want a lower, lower cost. But do you see any patterns emerging? I mean, every industry kind of needs this, but, yeah. but, but are there any industries that are getting more bang from the buck that, that you see? Um, I would say every industry definitely has archive data. So we have, we have customers in every uh, vertical segment. I think some of the ones that we're definitely seeing more activity from would be you know, media entertainment customers are a great fit for archive. Um, if you think about, you know, even like digital native studios who are, um, you know, generate, you know, very high definition footage and, you know, they take all that footage, they produce the movie, but they have a lot of original data that they, you know, they, they might reuse that you remaster director's cut or, you know, to, to use, you know, later, um, they're finding uh, archive is a great fit for that. So they're able to use um, S3 standard for their, their active production, but when they're done, uh, finishing a movie or production, they can take all that valuable original footage and move it in deep archive and just know that it's going to be there whenever they might need to use it. Um, another use case for staying in media entertainment, um, you know, kind of similar to that, and uh, this is a good use case for S3 Glacier, is um, if, if you have um, like sports footage from like the 60s and then, you know, there's like some sort of breaking news uh, event about some uh, athlete that you want to be able to cut a shot for the six o'clock news. Uh, with S3 Glacier and expedited retrievals, you're able to kind of get like that, um, you know, that data back in a couple of minutes. And uh, that way you have the benefit of like very low cost archive storage, but being able to get the immediacy of having uh, some of that data back when you need it. So. Um, so that's just some of the examples that we're seeing in terms of how customers are using archive. I love that example because you know the the prevailing wisdom is the older you know data is, the less valuable it is. But if you can pull a clip up of you know Babe Ruth at the right time, even though it's a little grainy, wow, that's huge value for the for the. Yeah, I mean we're we're finding like lots of customers uh, that uh, you know they've retained this data they haven't known why they're going to need it. They just sort of intrinsically know this data is really valuable and you know, we might need it. And then as they, um, uh, you know, they, they look for new opportunities and they're like, hey, you know, we're, we're going to remaster this. And uh, they, they've gone through a lot of digital transformation. Um, so we're seeing companies who have um, you know, decades of original material uh, moving to the cloud, we're we're also seeing you know fairly nascent startups who are also just generating uh, lots of archive data. So it's just you know one of the many use cases we we see for why customers love Glacier. Yeah, data hoarders heaven. I love it. Uh, okay, <laughs> Joe, let's 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 wrap up. Give us your, your closing thoughts. How you see the future of this business? Where you want to take take your 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 business for your customers? Um, I mean, mostly we we just really want to help customers. Uh, uh, optimize their storage and realize the potential of their data. Um, so for a lot of customers that really just comes down to um, knowing that uh, S3 Glacier is a great and trusted place for their data and that they're able to kind of meet their compliance and regulatory needs. Uh, but for you know a lot of other customers, um, they're, they're looking to kind of transform their business and reinvent themselves uh, as they move to the cloud. And uh, like, I think we're just excited by a lot of the emerging use cases and you know, being able to find that flexibility of, not, of having like very low cost storage, uh, as well as uh, being able to get access to that data and um, you know, hook it up into the other AWS services and, and really realize the potential of their data. 100%, I mean, we've seen it over the decades, cost drops, use cases explode. Thank you, Joe, thanks so much for coming on theCUBE. Thanks a lot, Dave, it's been great being here. All right, keep it right there for more storage and data insights. You're watching AWS Storage Day on theCUBE.